Hello everyone, Justin here for the Geek Review. Today, we're going to talk about the Penguins of Madagascar. Now, throughout its history, DreamWorks Animation has done incredible work with their franchises, both in their sequels and in their TV series. But the one place that they lack is in their spin-off films, because for some reason or another, they just can't get the fact that some characters are not strong enough to carry their own film. They did it once before with Puss in Boots, and they did it again with this movie. Now, don't get me wrong, the Penguins are great characters, but they're secondary characters. They're not very multifaceted. In fact, they're fairly one-dimensional, and they're easily defined with one or two words. Their main point in the Madagascar trilogy of films was to move the plot along. They were aspects of the plot. The plot didn't really drive them. It wasn't really their story. To put it a better way, Star Wars is the story of Luke Skywalker, not the story of Darth Vader. When you try to make it about the story of Darth Vader, you get the prequels. But that's an entirely different can of worms. The point being, the Penguins, as characters, are better in small doses. Their, their roles in the Madagascar films was great. Little short bits of funny action, them, you know, working with each other, working off the other characters... You know, they really do best when they have other characters to work against or with or, you know, to kind of support them, so to speak. And in the cartoon show, the, the, the Mad Penguin with Madagascar TV series, it was them in short little adventures. Because the penguins are better in small doses. When you try to take that small doses formula and expand it into a two-hour movie, you get oversaturation, and you lose what makes them work in the first place. When you, okay, when you adapt a TV cartoon into a full movie format, you have to do a little extra work. The characters have to grow, they have to change, they have to, you know, essentially go through a hero's journey. You can't just take the same formula that works for TV and transplant it into a movie without doing anything different, without doing what's required of a movie. That's why a lot of, you know, film adaptations of TV shows don't work, because they don't do that extra legwork. Movies are completely different from TV. They're two different writing styles, two different modes of storytelling. You can't just transplant one into the other. And this is essentially what happened. They basically took a cartoon format, put it into a film, but didn't do any of the extra legwork. So the characters don't grow. They don't change. They don't really learn anything. The plot just cycles back upon itself like a cartoon. Whereas where the situation they were in the beginning is exactly the situation where they were at the end. It just comes back around. And that's kind of where this movie failed. I mean, the plot is absolutely contrived. You know how it's going to end. You know how things are going to play out. It was essentially trying... It basically took a half-hour cartoon and stretched it into two hours. And that just doesn't work. If you're going to have the Penguins headline their own film, you can't just do the same thing you do for the TV show. Now, the film did have some good points. I mean, it is still DreamWorks, so the writing was very good, very clever. There are some very good jokes and very good comedic timing. And the film was genuinely funny. There were times when I laughed. But again, it's much better suited for small doses in a small format. This could have easily been a series of four half-hour 
TV so TV episodes, and it would have worked great. In fact, the film was originally supposed to be a direct-to-DVD film. It doesn't really work for the big screen. Now, on to the point where that, you know, on to the, the, the thing that I really care about was the voice acting. Because, you know, if you're going to, in any animated film, the voice acting really has to be strong. And, you know, they used the, with the exception of, of John DiMaggio, they used the, the movie cast. And Tom McGrath has played Skipper throughout its run, and he's very, very good. He knows the character very well. And I was, I, yes, I was a little upset that John DiMaggio wasn't in this movie. He he does Rico absolutely spectacularly, and I, I love his work. Um, now for the celebrity talent, uh, both Benedict Cumberbatch and John Malkovich put forth some very good acting. I was genuinely impressed. They did their roles very well, and John, um, Benedict Cumberbatch was actually very funny. The man can do comedy. I am impressed. But yeah, John Malkovich, absolutely perfect in the role. I loved his performance. Again, I wish they had gone with the TV cast because I get they're, they're just they're so much better with the animation. They really are. All in all, I give the film a B minus. I mean, it really is a blatant attempt to put you know squeeze more money out of a franchise. Madagascar 1, 2, and 3 were very good. It was a complete story. It ended on a, on a good note. We had closure. And this is just trying to continue that story and breathe new life into it. And it just didn't work. Should you go see the movie? If you're a fan of the Penguins of Madagascar, if you like the characters, then, yeah, you're going to go see it anyway. Should you pay for it? No. Rent it, maybe, or catch it when it comes on TV. But spending, you know, 8 to $12 to see it in theaters, it's not worth your money. If you're looking for an animated film to act as a two-hour babysitter, there are much better options. On that note, if you want to discuss more of the film, please leave comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more. I do enjoy making these videos and talking about movies. And I will see you with the next review.